good girl. Hi everyone, welcome to Kate Bonnie Country. Thanks for stopping by. You can call me Kate, and I think most of you know Tamir, my rescue husky. Come on in and have a seat while I explain the great husky grooming debate. Last summer, this picture of a shaved husky went viral. As it turns out, the customer asked for the dog to be trimmed for the summer, and the groomer shaved it. My understanding is that the groomer that did this is no longer employed at that particular shop. For those that might not know, Huskies are double-coated dogs. The outer coat protects them from moisture, while the undercoat protects their skin from the UV rays and provides insulation. The undercoat blows out in the spring and grows back fluffier and softer to provide more cooling and protect the skin from sunburning. It blows again in the fall and grows in more dense to insulate against the winter cold. Shaving any double-coated dog to the skin risks permanent damage to the undercoat and puts them at risk of sunburn. So this picture sparked a lot of debate about trimming huskies in the summer. I decided to perform an experiment on my own husky, Tamir. I had bathed her about two weeks prior, so we're skipping the bath today. I'm going to start by scooping out her paws and grinding her nails while I explain the experiment. I have learned that Tamir tolerates paw service better when I allow her to lie down. As usual, she was very mouthy in her objections, and a soft muzzle is needed to prevent her from nipping me as I proceed. I'm going to apologize for some of the footage right now. I had the main camera on a tripod and zoomed it in on where I thought I'd be grooming her at, but it turned out to be the wrong area to see her for most of the grooming. And my body cam kept getting bumped out of position, so I am piecing this video together as well as I can from the available footage. This video was recorded August 12th, 2024. I sat on it for roughly 12 weeks. A separate video will follow within two weeks showing the end results of this experiment. My Patreon supporters will have early access to that video. For as little as $2 per month, you will see that video early, participate in members-only conversations, and have access to other members-only content. Higher tiers are available that offer more perks and help my physical customers budget their grooming needs. The link to my Patreon is included in the description below. I live in Alabama. Huskies are bred to survive in the harshest of cold climates. They are not well adapted to living in the hot, humid climate of central Alabama. I trim Tamir's coat every six weeks during the summer in order to provide some relief from the heat. Tamir is a split coat husky, meaning that parts of her coat grow to a normal length of about two inches before shedding, and other parts of her coat are woolly. They grow as long as 8 inches before shedding. Normally, I use a 1 inch comb guard over my clipper blade and shave with the lay of her coat in order to trim it evenly and a little shorter. Many of the husky owners in a Facebook group I belong to argue that huskies should never be trimmed at all, while other members agree that shaving is a horrible idea, but trimming is okay. Clearly, I am on the trimming is okay side of the fence and wanted to answer the question, how short is too short? My greatest concerns with Tamir were preventing damage to the undercoat so it grows back correctly and not removing Tamir's natural defenses against sunburn. I considered single-coated dogs that are trimmed close, 
but do not get sunburn. And I decided that a Scottish Terrier is a very close analog. A number three or four blade is used to trim their backs and sides until you reach the underline. That is allowed to grow out into a skirt. This trims their coats on their backs and sides to roughly one-eighth of an inch long. That is enough to protect Scotties from sunburn. However, Scotties tend to have more melanin in their skin, causing a darker skin tone. Huskies have white or pink skin underneath all of that fur, so I reasoned that using a quarter inch comb guard is the absolute shortest I could go when I trim Tamir. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I really appreciate your support. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments and share this video with your friends. Liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing feeds the algorithm and pushes my videos out to more viewers. I cannot continue without viewer support, and the shelter dogs over on Kate's Country Critters really need your help. Subscribing to Kate's Country Critters, following me on Facebook, and or joining my Patreon are other ways you can help. The links to all of these are in the description below. Once her paws were finished, I gave her a short potty break and returned to start de-shedding her with the undercoat rake. I brush her daily, so there was no matting to remove, except for a few small, tiny mats that were beginning to form behind her ears. Tamir wears a red collar 24 hours a day, every day. I live in a rural area with coyotes, and if she gets loose, a neighbor could easily mistake her for a coyote and shoot her. By placing a bright red collar on her, and trimming her fur around it, I hope to minimize the chance of that happening. I decided to use my original clippers for this groom rather than the newer professional one with the interchangeable blades. These clippers have a single adjustable blade. When fully extended, it is the equivalent of a number four blade. Fully retracted, it is a number 10. I retracted the blade and placed a quarter inch comb guard on it. As soon as I began, I noticed that all of the visible black disappeared from her coat. I immediately questioned my wisdom and became fearful that I was damaging her undercoat. That said, I am a groomer. I am well equipped to mitigate any damage that may occur, and to assist her undercoat in recovery. I was committed to completing the experiment and hoped for the best. I removed the guard and used the 10-blade setting to shave her sanitary area. For her tail, I decided to craft a flag tail by shaving the top side with the clipper blade extended completely to the number 4 setting. Then, I used my blending shears to layer the length of her tail. She needed another break, so I put her in her walking harness and let her out on the runner for a few minutes. Then, we came back for touch-ups. I trimmed the feathering on her legs, trimmed around the face, and blended her neck into the shorter fur at the collar line. I finished off by brushing her teeth and giving her a final brush out. My girl certainly looks different after this trim. I have to admit, I'm afraid I went too short. From the perspective of her appearance, I do not like the look of removing all of the visible black. Up close, you can still see that her coat is peppered, but overall, she just looks wrong to me. I will not go this short ever again, based solely on her appearance. Next spring, I will try a half-inch guard and see if that is more aesthetically pleasing. Only time will tell if I actually caused any damage to her undercoat. Roughly six weeks after this trim, I bathed her and performed a paw maintenance. 
I am recording this on November 7, 2024. Tomorrow, November 8, marks 12 weeks and 4 days since I performed this experiment. I will film that and show you the end results. Did I damage her undercoat? Has her appearance recovered? Did trimming her this short in August affect her autumn blowout in October? For the answers to those questions, watch for the next video to drop. My Patreon members will have those answers first. Thank you so much for watching today. Feel free to stop by anytime.